it has been one of the most challenging things that I've ever done. It has been really, really hard. And I think I might come across as a little bit emotionless in this video. And that's not because I am emotionless. I think because there are so many emotions around it, I'm just trying to get through the video without bursting into tears or anything like that. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Leanne and this is Baby Bell. So today we're going to be sharing our breastfeeding journey. Now, this is something that I've wanted to film, tried to film a couple of times, and I've always felt like maybe it's not, people don't want to hear it, or it's quite an emotional journey for me, so it's quite difficult to film, but we're actually filming this during World Breastfeeding Week, and it's not going to be live during World Breast Breastfeeding Week, uh, but we're actually filming it, and I've been inspired and encouraged by other people's journeys so you know we're, we're almost 10 months in and I'm now I think I'm ready to talk about it now hopefully I don't get too massively over emotional while we're filming this but if I do I do apologize so breastfeeding wasn't something that I really took any notice of until I was actually pregnant and then I I was adamant that I was going to breastfeed I thought that that was the best thing that I could do for my baby you know it's it's natural, it's free, you know, money saving, and it's there on tap. There's no messing about with bottles. So, you know, we were so sure that that's what we were gonna do. We'd done, you know, breastfeeding classes and anti uh, antenatal classes and everything. We were so sure that's what we were gonna do that. Although we had stuff on our list, we hadn't actually bought any bottle feeding stuff when I went into labor, but we had such a complicated labor and both of us were so ill afterwards that we we missed that that golden hour that first do you want the list that first hour of skin to skin content uh oh my god why are you eating the paper that first hour of skin to skin contact i think that had a, a big effect on our journey and obviously we were both very ill we both had infections and baby bell was very sleepy i'd lost a lot of blood so my milk didn't come in for a couple of days so although we spent a lot of time right let me have that thank you so although we spent a lot of time attempting to get baby bell to latch it it wasn't happening to start with and i started getting to con getting concerned that she hadn't had a feed i think this was sort of like five hours she'd been born for about five hours and she hadn't had a feed so because i wasn't able to move at this stage the midwife fed her I think from a spoon to start with, had a little tiny bit of formula. So I was absolutely gutted that her first feed wasn't some colostrum, but she needed to be fed. She was given some formula and we kept trying to latch her and you know, she would get, she would get so, so upset. It just wasn't happening. So she was given, she was given formula and we kept, as I said, we kept trying to latch. Um, we ended up staying in hospital for six days and every time she was due a feed I was having I was asking for the midwives and the maternity support workers to come in and help us like, try and get the latch right and try and get her to feed and honestly it was such a stressful experience the amount of conflicting advice I was getting people were saying one of them would say that you need to do it like this and one of them would say that you would need to do it like that and one was saying you know that's wrong don't do that and I had no idea what was going on. I was really ill. I was really tired. I had a brand new baby to look after. I was in hospital on my own because John was only allowed to visit for three hours a day. And I was in a room on our own. So it was just me and baby Belle. And it was so, so stressful. And then my milk came in and I ended up with a, a lump underneath my left arm, which was really uncomfortable. And then one of the maternity support workers suggested that I try and pump. So they brought me a pump in and I pumped. We managed to get a little bit of colostrum out. And then over the next couple of days, every time it was time for a feed, I would try and latch her, feed her with a little bit of formula and then pump. And eventually we had enough so that she was actually having breast, she was having breast milk for a couple of feeds a day. Yay. Hey. Yeah. So then when it was time for us to go home, we had uh, an electric pump ready that John had got and got home and we couldn't get it to work. And obviously I was so stressed at this point. Baby Bell was having ready-made formula. 
my boobs obviously needed emptying but we couldn't get this pump to work so we ordered an emergency uh, manual one which was due on Amazon Prime so that it would come the next day and just went to bed thinking you know I've got no idea what's going to happen here I don't know whether this is now the end of it you know, before we've even started and then the pump the manual pump turned up the next day and although that was like a, a lifesaver oh my god that is so awkward to use I'm just keeping an eye on what she's doing over here that was so awkward to use. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of effort to get a, a full feed out and to empty both booths with a, a manual pump. So, but we carried on like that and I'd ordered a, another electric pump, which was the Bella Baby one, which turned up in a couple of days. And that was it. That was, that was how we went. I was pumping every two to three hours, every time Baby Bell woke up for a feed, I would feed her and then I would pump and then it was, you know, then we then I'd wash the pump and the bottles, get everything mm. sterilised, and it was and it felt like a never-ending cycle of feeding, winding, pumping, washing the bottles and sterilising everything. And obviously that you know it has to be done two every two to three hours, and that's day and night. So every mm. night I would be up at probably eleven, and then two, and then five, and. The whole the whole thing could take maybe up to an hour and a half. So if Baby Bell was feeding every two hours, I would literally get like ten minutes sleep, and then it would have to start again. And it was it was incredibly lonely. It was so hard. John was obviously back at work. Hey, John was obviously back at work, and he was getting up at like five o'clock in the morning and driving for two hours. So I couldn't even ask him to do the the feed. So. And that that was hard there was a lot of times when I was questioning you know if I was doing the right thing hey would it be easier just to go on to formula you know why why was I doing this but then obviously when you're when you're on formula you still got to get up and make the bottles and everything so I didn't feel like I would gain anything from that so yeah so I, I stuck with this cycle and baby bell would have please don't pull my hair baby bell would have a, a bottle of formula occasionally because i was trying to build up a freezer stash of boob milk because i wanted to keep giving her that boob milk for as long as possible but the formula didn't really seem to agree with her she'd get quite sicky after that so it was mainly just trying to pump as much as possible. And then when she was a month old, she was, that's my one, that's your one. When she was a, when she was a month old, she actually latched. So, so for nearly every single feed, I would try and latch her before I fed her. And when she was a month old, she actually finally latched and had stopped doing that and had a little feed uh, and then we topped her up with uh, express milk from a bottle and the next couple of feeds we did that and she'd latched well and oh my god my excitement you know I was like this is it you know we're finally we're finally there and then after two days she just forgot how to boob again so we were back to bottle feeding the express milk um, when I was in hospital as well I'd asked if it you know she'd had a if she had a tongue tie and I was told by a couple of people that no she definitely didn't have a tongue tie and it was all fine so but when she was actually latching I noticed baby bell no when she was actually latching I noticed that my nipples were coming out an odd shape afterwards and also she was quite um, sicky which is a can be a sign of tongue tie so I kept pushing I kept pushing and I kept pushing to get seen and we eventually had a telephone appointment with uh, a tongue tie consultant or someone and they asked all these questions and they said well yeah actually it does sound like she could have so I'll book you a face-to-face -face appointment and it was about four or five weeks down the line so what are you doing baby bell so although I was pleased that we were finally getting somewhere it was just incredibly incredibly frustrating to to have to wait so long to finally get seen. I get obviously that it was COVID and there were restrictions in place, but I do feel like that sort of thing, it, she should have been seen straight away rather than a telephone appointment. But anyway, we continued on with our, our cycle of pumping and bottle feeding and trying to get her to latch. And then on the 23rd of December last year, yeah. 
And then on the 23rd of December last year, I did my usual trying to get her to latch and she wasn't having any of it. She just got so upset. And I laid her down on the sofa next to me and then out of like desperation, I just sort of leant forward over her and dangled my boob in her face and she latched and she had a full feed. It was awkward, it was uncomfortable. I was in like a plank position and I'll put a photo in so that you can see what I mean. But she fed, she actually had a full feed. And then the next feed, we tried it a bit more normal. So I had her in the cradle hold and sort of leant forward that way and she fed and then that night I pumped at 3 a.m. because I didn't want to try and feed her, like direct nurse her at that time because I thought it was gonna, you know, it's gonna be too stressful. So I pumped then and the next day was Christmas Eve and from that moment on I haven't pumped and she has boobed directly. I you know, I can't even begin to explain like the excitement and how relieved I was that she had finally done it. And obviously every single feed, it was always in the back of my mind that, you know, what if this is the time that she forgets how to do it? Hello. 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 But those, ow. But those first few feeds, like the pain that I got in my nipples was awful. It actually made me feel sick. And then again, I was, I was once more questioning, you know, had I done the right thing? This is what I'd wanted to get done for over two months. But the pain, like feeding in the middle of the night, the pain was awful. It was like literally toe curling. But we, we persevered and that 3 a.m. pump on Christmas Eve was the last day that I have ever pumped. I have not done it since. I just can't bring myself to go back to it. And we, so from then on, we were boobing. And then we got, finally got our tongue tie appointment and that was about five or six weeks later. So Baby Bell was 16 weeks old when we had her tongue tie appointment. We went to this appointment. Again, COVID restrictions meant that it was just me that went in there, took Baby Bell in. John waited out in the car, in the car park for us. And we'd had the discussion before we went into the appointment of, you know, whether we would, if she was tongue tied, whether we would have a revision procedure done or not. And we decided that we would, you know, wait to see what they said before we actually did anything, before we decided. What are you doing? So anyway, we had our appointment and we were informed that Baby Bell was actually 75% tongue tied. So she was very severely tongue tied. And we were told that if it wasn't corrected, she could have problems in future um, with being able to drink from a straw and eating properly and just draw jaw shape and that sort of thing. So I made the decision to have her tongue tie cut. Now I'd looked into tongue tie revision before we went in that, so I really did think that I knew what to expect. But with babies, they don't, there's no anaesthetic. They just cut the tongue tie because apparently there's no, uh, th there aren't any nerves, no feeling in that area. Um, and they said there might be a little bit of blood and then you just nurse them afterwards and it's all fine. So I was like, okay, yeah, we, we can do this. This is brilliant. So I had to hold her head and the tongue tie consultant did three cuts under her tongue, which obviously she hated. That was awful. I haven't heard a cry like that before or since. Uh, and then obviously the idea is that I then breastfed her. It would stop the bleeding and we'd be fine and we'd go home. It didn't quite work like that. She was so hysterical that I couldn't get her to latch and both of us were covered in blood. There was just blood everywhere. It was, it was horrendous. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? You know, again, I'm questioning my decisions. Have I done the right thing? But eventually we did get her to latch and she fed and the bleeding stopped and we were allowed to go home. We were told what to expect. We were given care details and told that probably, you know, her latch should improve and everything would be fine. We might have a couple of days where she's not quite sure what she's doing because she's now got a mobile tongue, but you know, all in all, it should be absolutely fine. It was fine. Her latch has not ever improved though. She still has a terrible latch. And I think now that she's older, that isn't your toy, that's Jessie's. Now that she's older, her, her latch is absolutely terrible, but there's no pain. She's not sicky. 
it works for us. But there was never any improvement in her latch. She's always had a really, really shallow latch, but we're still boobing. She's almost 10 months old. Because we, because I was so worried that if we gave her a bottle, she'd forget how to boob again. She didn't have a bottle from just before Christmas all the way up until I think it was April and she won't take one. She will not take a bottle at all. John's tried to give her a bottle a couple of times and it is absolute mayhem, carnage. She gets so hysterical. So going from not taking a bottle to... So going from only taking a bottle to not taking a bottle at all in the space of a couple of months is... It's just strange. Um, and, you know, that's meant that now... That meant that I wasn't able to leave her for very long. Obviously, now that she's on solids. Maybe I was demonstrating how she likes to get all her toys out. Now that she's on solids and she drinks water, it's much better that we can just, I can go out for a couple of hours and leave her and know that she's going to be getting food. But booby is her favourite thing. Baby Bell, boobies. Boobies. Babies! Baby Bell! She knows the word, you can see she's on her way over. Babies! Booby is her favourite thing. I think, um, I really thought that by this age that she would be boobing a lot less and eating a lot more, but she, she eats quite a lot of solid food now, but she will boob, you know, off a boob and she will take it. In the middle of the night, she helps herself to boob. It is just her, her favourite thing. So I don't know when we're going to wean. I have no idea when that's going to happen. But I'm I'm so glad that we persevered with it. it. It has been one of the most challenging things that I've ever done. It has been really, really hard. Um, and I think I might come across as a little bit emotionless in this video. And that's not because I am emotionless. I think because there are so many emotions around it, I'm just trying to get through the video without bursting into tears or anything like that. But it's been one of the hardest things that I've done. And as I said, I'm so glad that we've done it. The The bond that we have is amazing. John has bonded with Baby Bell through different ways. Obviously he can't boob her, but he gives her a bath, he gets her ready for bed, he reads a book with her, he plays with her, so that hasn't affected their bond at all, but for us it has been amazing, and it is, it's her favourite, favourite thing, I think, and I, most of the time I enjoy it, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are times in the middle of the night where I just think, oh, please let me sleep, you know, let, can somebody else do this, but on the whole, I am I am so glad that we persevered with it. And I hope that this inspires other people. This isn't me saying, you know, I battled through it so anybody can do it. It's hard. I wouldn't have been able to do it if I'd had older children or if I didn't have such a supportive partner or if I just wasn't so stubborn. I think that's one of the things. As I said, there were times when I questioned whether I was doing the right thing and whether it would just be easier to swap to formula. But breastfeeding is free. I'm quite tight. I'm also quite lazy. And for me, just flopping boob out is so much easier than getting bottles ready. Hey, have you come for a booby snack? Have you come for a booby snack? Yeah? You tell a little bit about your booby snack. So yeah, hopefully this video will inspire someone else just to you know not to give up if giving up is something that they don't want to do to battle through to see that you know combi feeding is is something that you know you can do and still get that journey that you want eventually as i said she's been formula fed she's had express boob milk she's been direct nurse we've done a combination of all three and she is now a massive booby baby. There's no denying the fact that it is one of her favourite things. So hopefully this does inspire some other people. And I'm always happy to answer any questions that you might have about it. Pop them in the comments if you've got any questions or send me a DM over at Instagram and I'm more than happy to try and answer them. Baby Bell, come here. Come here. Come on. 
as usual we really hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it useful if you did don't forget to give it a like leave us a comment and hit that subscribe button it makes us really happy and it lets youtube know that the video is worth showing to other people we'll see you next time say bye say bye Yes, she is.